Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Oh, this, I, as you can tell, I got a wig on. <laughs> How the heck? Okay, it's this side. Yeah, anyways, this is my dare We on my show that I do from 3 to 5. I'm going to be giving you NHL picks, as you can see in the background there. My dare was to wear a wig for a month. I should have did it, like, everywhere I went. That would have been interesting. But actually, it's just for the show. A show I do from 3 to 5 Eastern called the NHL Pearls of Wisdom Show. Uh, uh, coincidentally. Uh, so you can check it out. This And uh, this is all through, that's through the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. This is through BPAL Picks, which is a Patreon that people use to make a little money. Uh, we made some more money last night on a game on some games that a lot of people were pretty fady on, but I actually kind of like them. So I went with them, and uh, that doesn't, I don't want that there. Stop it. There, that's better. There. There we go. Anyways, okay. <laughs> um, this is the kind of frolic you get when you subscribe, and you get a Pearls of Wisdom necklace pearlcopter to your door, but this too. There you go. Uh, so subscribe to the channel. Helps out a lot. Trying to hit a grand. Hit a thousand subscribers. And you can help out a lot by touching that subscribe button, my friends. Okay, let's look at uh, the picks from last night. Or sorry, the picks for tonight of the 13th. Last night was the 12th. And we'll go over some of the things that we may lean and try to make some money on today. How about that? Okay, first of all, we have... Minnesota versus St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis is going to be playing Bennington in here. There's going to be probably some guys that aren't going to be playing in the lineup uh, in this uh, spot. So St. Louis is going to be playing Vegas uh, for sure. And Minnesota is going to be playing Colorado for sure. So there's not much for the standings. But I don't believe so anyways. I should just make sure. Just to make sure. Let's look just to make sure. Yeah, uh, St. Louis, yeah, nothing, not even close. So um, I'm going to go back to St. Louis here. Minnesota just really struggles with um, the St. Louis system. Fortunately for them, they're not playing them in the playoffs because they really had a hard time with them this year. Uh, Kakinen's going to be in for Minnesota, and I like the kid. Um, but both teams are probably not going to be putting their best out there today. So... I might. I figure we might as well go with the uh, plus money. You can get at Bet Online. You can get it for two oh six. Kind of all over the place. There's some one ninety five. The average is two. You might as well take the full double. Um, and the Blues at home, since they kind of own Minnesota this year, anyways, seems to be the most logical pick for me. And I would probably go the over here, although I'm not a huge fan of the total because. These two teams are not going to be highly motivated in this game, I don't think. Um, Minnesota may be pushing to try to establish a little bit of the uh, um, psychological advantage a little bit over St. Louis, but I, I really think it's going to be hard to get the players motivated here to do a lot. But I still am going to take the over because these teams just have so many goal scorers. And once the game gets going, the idea is to score. And with their goal scoring and, uh, you know, cocking it in for Minnesota, who's just a young guy, uh, I could see it going over. I probably am not – I'm not a huge fan of the total. Uh, Vancouver, Calgary. Um, I kind of thought about taking Vancouver puck line here because it's really a nothing game. And those can stay close. However, Vancouver's this is three games and four nights for Vancouver, and Calgary has had lots of rest. Um, it's possible Calgary commit could come in here and go, ah, we just don't care, anyways, because you know Calgary's going to be a different team next year. However, I think Sutter's going to really be playing guys that he thinks that are working to be a Calgary Flame. There's there are guys there that want to stay. 
in Calgary, have their family in Calgary. They don't want to be moving and all that sort of stuff like that. So I think there's going to be, guys, a little more motivation for Calgary here. For Vancouver, um, it's been a rough season. It's not just the three games in four. It's just the whole season in general is finally over. And I think there's like this sense of relief now in the lineup where like we'll start next year. And that's going to be the mindset that they're uh, in, I believe. Demko should keep it close, though, to a certain degree. At least keep the total down. So I'm going to lean the under, and you're getting plus money on the under here. I'm going to lead the under at 207, 205. Now, that's assuming it's going to be Demko and Markstrom in. We're going to have to see what happens there. I'm pretty sure it'll be Demko. If Calgary goes with somebody else, and I don't even know who that is now, Parsons, whatever, I may switch this. So it's a good idea to be a Patreon member because if those things change, I let people know on the Patreon. I send it out to them, send info as the day goes on. Not to mention there could be some players sat possibly. Um, but in Calgary's case, I think the players that are that could be sat are probably players that won't be back next year. So... I think Calgary's just going to be a little more motivated. I'll take Calgary on the ML for 157. I really don't like the juice you're giving up on this game, but um, I, I do think Calgary will probably pull it through. Los Angeles versus Colorado. Um, Colorado's going to be playing Johansson. And um, when Colorado plays Johansson, they play a more defensive game. Uh, this might be kind of a ploy by Bacard to um, get the Colorado Avalanche foci- focusing on defense going into the playoffs a little bit. Um, Los Angeles could go with Quick here, but I'm hearing, it, like right now, it's showing Groshnik. Uh, Groshnik is not a very good goaltender. I think Colorado will want to keep these winning ways going. They, they kind of were on an iffy spot going into the playoffs. And winning two games in a row would be a really good boost for them as they go against a what will be a very difficult Minnesota team that we were just talking about. So even if they sit a couple guys, I think Colorado's got the game, got the, uh, the still got the guns to be able to take a Los Angeles team who putting Groshnik in is really saying we don't really want to win this. They're looking more for draft position. And, uh, I'm not really a big fan of that. I like more, to me, if you're going to be a, uh, a Stanley Cup winning team eventually, the philosophy of taking care of the next game, winning the next game, and not thinking too far ahead and all of those sort of things like that has been proven to work the best. And I find that doing things like this deviates from that philosophy and uh, in the long run can actually be not very effective for the teams involved. So, But as it stands, I think L.A. may be in that mode. Uh, Colorado blew them out last night. I don't know. They could play for pride and come back a little bit here, but I, I think Colorado will win this. I'm going to say we can't go here. We can't give up that much juice. So we'll go and reg, get half our monies back, and put a, you know, a medium amount of pearls on it. Uh, and, uh, so we're going to be getting ready for playoffs now. Check. I'll be doing a playoff video today, prediction videos, and I'll be doing lots of them. So keep on this channel. You can hear my predictions with the Steel Flyers crew as we predict what the play, who's going to win in the first round. Um, we're going to look now at the games from last night and see how we did, um, and see how there was a lot, like I said, a lot of people faded this. Um, and I didn't, and I actually like these games, and we'll talk about why. Um, Starting with the Oilers and Canadians, um, I like the Oilers in this spot mostly because they put Primo in net, but also because the Oilers are, have always been a team that didn't, uh, that played right to the end, except for the little time when they tanked there, which I totally disagreed with, and it really affected their organization. There's a good example. You have the Buffalo Sabres that tanked for Eichel. You have the Oilers that, that seem to tank, um, not necessarily for McDavid. They won that uh, through the lottery, but they did tank to get the higher 
draft position or appeared to be. And after they did that, the organization was never the same because it screws up. You can't teach one thing and do something different. Um, if you're going to do the successful um, uh, psychological way of looking at games where you do not pass the first game, you just go to the next game, go to the next game. Sutter from Calgary does this very well. Uh, then all of a sudden deviate on it because you're trying to tank or whatever the case may be. I think in the long term, it actually makes it worse than if you would have got that superstar or whatever the case may be. So, And it shows to be true with teams like Buffalo and the Oilers in a lot of ways. Um, the only team that seemed to not affect was the Pittsburgh Penguins, although they did struggle for a while when they tank after tanking for Crosby too. So, uh, Senators <clears throat> versus the Maple Leafs. Um, I had the Senators on the puck line, um, but was also suggesting not a bad idea to take ML. I know at least one of my Patreon clients did take the ML on this. So um, they made good money, but we had the, oh, by the way, we had the over on that too, right? Um, Maple Leafs versus, yeah, we had the over and we had the Senators. Um, I just thought the Senators, I, I, this is a good example of what I was just saying. The Senators did not tank down the stretch here. They're going to get a poorer draft position now because of it. But um, they, uh are going to be better in the long run. They are building a team there, a successful team. Now, if they play the last 20 games, like in, in next like next year, the way they play the last 20 games, add a couple pieces, this is a playoff team. If you would have told these guys now, okay, you know, guys, we need the draft position, so whatever, blah, 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 totally change the psychological way they're looking at their team. Winning is a psych is an attitude which comes from a psychological philosophy. If we if you screw with that philosophy, no matter who you have in the lineup in a lot most most ways, uh, most times, it's not going to work. You're not going to become the team that you need to become. So, uh, that's just my my. Tell me in the comment section if you disagree with me on that. But that's just my opinion. Uh, Golden Knights versus the Sharks. We had the Golden Knights in regulation. I don't know why I didn't go puck line on that, but we went in regulation for large. We it was paying like one fifty seven or something like that. So um, we did we did well. We had three what, large means three or more pearls. So however many they put on there or units, if you will, uh, and we also had the over. Uh, Sharks are a good example of a team that doesn't have that philosophy that I was talking about. And I think it's it's affected them. Like they put in their third stringer last night. And if you watch the game, it was over before it even got started. These guys were not mentally in a position in their minds that they were thinking about winning that game. And, I, and the more I think a team does that, the, 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 the uh, worse it is for the team. Or the bigger... Uh, obstacle it is to become great, I guess is a better way of putting it. The Avalanche over the Kings, 6 nothing. We had the Avalanche on the puck line, which is for 177, and we had the over here. So we did very well on that. We did not um, – the Avalanche played Grubauer. They did sit some guys. The Kings, I'm really surprised. I thought they would come out better than that. They did play Peterson. I think Blake will be very unhappy with the effort that they've been putting out. Uh, going down the stretch here. This may be more to do with the fact that they have a very young team, though, uh, that hadn't played in the league very much, and they were just getting, they were just beat up at the end of the year. Maybe more than, you know, kind of tanking. Hard to say, though. Um, Blues versus Wild. We This is when we lost. We had the over and we had the Wild. Um, give it to the Blues. They played really well. Uh, they and they they obviously were playing to win, although they had Huso in net, and they sat a couple guys, but not everybody. They were playing to win this game, and uh, I like that. I like that going into, especially going into a team with a team like Vegas, to have that attitude of winning going in there. You're gonna have to because if you don't, you're done. Vegas will absolutely rip you apart. So, um, uh, going through, I think I was up by five. Pearls. I'm up about 40 for the season. 
that's pretty darn good. If you're betting a hundred bucks per, that's four thousand dollars for a season of hockey. Not too bad. We got a couple, another game, a couple games coming up tomorrow, so we can still get up even further, and I imagine we will. And then, of course, we got the playoffs, babe, babe. So that'll be exciting. I can't wait till that happens. Uh, I'm going to be on my show today between 3 and 5. I'd love to see you there. Uh, come over to uh, this channel between 3 and 5 Eastern. It's the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show. I'll be wearing my wig. Why am I wearing the wig? I lost a bet. Not really a bet. It's um, We have a competition for picks. You get points. You pick the team and the score. Whoever wins gets to tell me a dare for the month. This is my dare for the month. So it's, we have a lot of fun there, man. Come check it out. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.